promoting to the examiners, other presenter, and the audience. Hi. So, on this beautiful morning, uh, my name is Ninjali, and on this beautiful morning, I will present about my FYP project titled Nutritional Evaluation of Azola Filipulators and Azola Microphyla as Supplements for Dairy Ruminants. So, my metric number is BMPL 1905603. My FYP project is under the supervision of Dr. Nuru Aini Kamaluddin. So in this FYP presentation, I will talk about introduction, which include the problem statement, significance of study, objective, the literature review, materials method, expected outcome, reference, and gun charts. So let's start with the introduction. According to the human population statistic, the human population is expected to increase in the future. So, increase in human population will cause the increased demand for meat and dairy products. Thus, to meet the demand of the increasing in meat and dairy products, we need more animal feed. So, commercial feeds are not economical, but it's a different story for Azola. And according to Mukuma et al. 2020, it is stated that Azola has attracted the attention of scientists as a feed resource due to its high nutritive value high biomass yield, less land needed, and low cost. Azola also tried without the addition of nitrogen fertilizer because it has a symbiotic relationship with a blue-green alga named Ana, Anabina Azole. So uh, the, the alga will provide nitrogen to the Azola, and then the Azola will provide habitat for the alga. And Azola is also high in calcium content, which will help to increase the milk production in like the So, uh, for to produce milk and milk components. And then according to Pro et al. 2014, Azola is noted for its rapid growth rate, which can double biomass in two days under ideal condition, which we can see from this graph is 30 degrees Celsius. So for my program statement, there are three. The first problem statement is high cost of imported concentrates. So uh, most of the animal feed in Malaysia is imported from overseas. Uh, and then during COVID-19, the animal feed is limited. And then it also increased in price due to inflation. So uh, imported feed is not economical to the farmers in Malaysia. And then the second problem statement is limited crop area. Uh, we need a huge land to plant and feed if we want to plant. So, and then, but Azola can be planted in water, and then you don't need to disturb the natural ecology or natural ecology of the surroundings or the environment. And the third one is environmental pollution of our west. Azola don't need nitrogen, so it won't have uh, nitrogen pollution. So the benefit of my study is to help lower down the cost of animal feed in livestock industry in Malaysia. And so because Azola can be so cultivated by the farmers at home and it doesn't need a lot of space. And then the second significant study is uh, reduce the dependency on limited crop land. And the third significant study is reduce environmental pollution caused by nitrogen. So there are two objectives in my study. The first objective is to determine the nutrients and mineral composition of Azola filipuloides and Azola microphyla. The second objective is to compare the nutrients and mineral composition between Azola filipuloides and Azola microphyla. Next. So for the literature review, Azola can act as a valuable green feed supplement for dairy cattle to improve productivity in terms of growth, milk, and meat. And Azola contains really high levels of nitrogen, so it can be an attractive protein source for animal feed. And then Azola is a floating fern distributed in warm, temperate, subtropical, tropical region of East Africa, Asia, and America. Azola was also shown to be a high source in calcium, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, copper, mag magnesium, and zinc in general. Carbohydrate, amino acid, fatty acid minerals, vitamins and water are all necessary, uh, all necessary by lactating dairy cow. Next. 
So huge demand of housing is needed by the dairy cow due to enormous volume of milk that cows generate and parturition. Uh, if the calcium is not replenished, it will cause milk fever to the to the ruminant, which is a, a condition where the ruminant cannot stand up and then they have low body temperature. And then the the last one is the new the nutrient composition of azola is a highly efficient and effective feed to, give, to be given for livestock. It's easier to digest, owing to its low protein and low lipid content. The animal can quickly accustom to it, and azola is also easy and economical to be cultivated. So I will collect my samples in Exno Agro Business, Sendiria Bahat Ladang Lembah Kapima, Ulu Seladang. So I will call, the sample I will collect is azola filiculoides and azola microfilma. So for the materials and method, there, there are five. The first, firstly I will collect the sample, the plant sample, and then second I will prepare the plant sample by drying it at 45 degrees Celsius for 48 hours in the oven, and I will store it inside a clear plastic at room temperature. And then the third is the one is. Nutritional composition of ana analysis, which is a uh, prosimate analysis. I will use prosimate analysis according to AOAC 2005. And then I will do mineral analysis by using ICP OES. And then the last last one is ethical analysis. I will analyze my sample, the data from my sample using SESS tests. So there are two expected outcomes from my your project. The first expected outcome is nutrients and mineral composition in azola filiculoides and azola microfila will be determined. And the second one is the nutrients and mineral composition of azola filiculoides and azola microfila will be compared. So the next three slides is my reference I used to uh, make this slide. So this is my gun chart. It shows the flow of uh, me doing the Proposal, slide proposal. So that's all from me.